What's up everybody, it's EJ Spark and today we are doing the top 10 rock bands of the 1990s. If you guys don't know my criteria by now, it's in the description below. And uh, this is going to be my last video in the series of best hip-hop artists and groups uh, from the 80s to the 2010s and rock bands from the 60s to the 90s. Now this is because I'm stopping at the 90s because rock just gets so crazy with subgenres of grunge and pop and ska punk and all these different genres that it's just hard to keep up with so eventually I'll split them up uh, so let me know what you guys want to see in terms of countdowns for the next few weeks I might go a little something a little easier maybe like top five albums of a certain artist or top five songs of a certain artist so let me know in the comments what countdowns you guys want to see and I just want to say like I am not favoring a band at all like there's no bias no favoritism in any of this so um, we're gonna get right to it. Let's get right into the honorable mentions as we always do uh, Once again, these are just my opinions and uh, we'll see how this plays out. So my honorable mentions um, And this includes all genres of rock, you know, even punk and and all that and grunge and everything because it's just so hard to separate it So we're going all rock of all kinds honorable mentions go nine inch nails uh, Metallica and ACDC, I do believe they still get a nod in the 90s, but I don't think they truly embody the 90s as the other 10. Uh, the Smashing Pumpkins, R.E.M., Weezer, and Incubus. I really teeter-tottered with Incubus, but I think these other 10 are just way more influential, way more impactful, and let's get into the top 10. All right, so first things first, as I was making this list, I realized there's a lot of bands from Seattle, and I realized, like, the Seattle grunge scene was so prominent in the 90s. It's unreal. At number 10, I have the Foo Fighters. Uh, Foo Fighters are from Seattle. Uh, they were formed by Nirvana drummer Dave Grohl after uh, Nirvana ended. Um, they're just really good. I always remember my uh, my history teacher in high school loved the Foo Fighters. He he went to high school and college in the 90s. He was a big 90s guy. He always talked about the Foo Fighters. So that's really when I got into the Foo Fighters was sophomore year of high school because of my AP US history teacher. Uh, their albums were self-titled album, Foo Fighters, The Color and The Shape, There's Nothing Left to Lose, and notable songs Everlong, Learn to Fly, and My Hero. I think Foo Fighters are just a staple of the 90s. And uh, they were still Still kicking it for a while so Foo Fighters at number 10. At number 9 I have Soundgarden. Uh, I think Soundgarden's pretty overlooked I'm not gonna lie. Uh, they were also formed in Seattle Washington part of the grunge scene. Um, Chris Cornell was the lead singer. Uh, they sold 25 million albums worldwide as of 2012, so if that doesn't show you their uh, popularity, I don't know what will. Uh, they really embodied the 90s. They really have that 90s sound. Their albums were Screaming Life, Super Unknown, and Down on the Upside. Uh, the Super Unknown album was very, very good. Uh, definitely their best album. I enjoy it very much. If you haven't listened to Soundgarden, definitely listen to Super Unknown. Very weird spelling but I like it notable songs black hole Sun spoon man and fell on black days uh, Soundgarden's just a staple so Soundgarden at number nine at number eight I have one of my favorite bands of all time rage against the machine uh, very grungy of course uh, they were very you know power to the people of course Zach De La Rocha lead singer that man was wild uh, he had the craziest vocals definitely had a lot of hip-hop influence in there uh, and they were from LA they weren't from Seattle but they definitely had a West Coast uh, Seattle sound. Their albums were self-titled album Rage Against the Machine, uh, Evil Empire, and Battle of Los Angeles. Uh, I think Evil Empire was their best album in my opinion, but Battle of Los Angeles and Rage Against the Machine were very good. Uh, notable songs Killing in the Name, Bulls on Parade, and Gorilla Radio. I mean, these guys, you could you, you just turn them on in the gym and you could get that pump. So I love listening to them in the gym. They're very hardcore. Uh, very easy to listen to, I think, in terms of heavy, grungy songs, um, just because it's so good and really gets you hyped. So, Rage Against the Machine is also a staple, and they deserve to be in this top 10, in my opinion. So, Rage Against the Machine at number 8. So, two weeks in a row, I have a tie in the top 10. I just couldn't leave any of these bands out um, because they're so good. So, at number 7, I have a tie between Sublime and Radiohead. Now this is where things get a little tricky with the genres because Ska is, uh, Ska itself isn't technically a subgenre of rock, but Ska Punk is. 
So, which is what Sublime is. Um, I love Sublime. They're from Cali. They definitely have that West Coast style, which I love. Bradley Noel with the lead vocals. Uh, he was just so smooth and silky with his vocals. Uh, now they're Sublime with Rome. Um, I actually like Sublime with Rome. I know a lot of people, a lot of hardcore Sublime fans either really love it or they're just iffy about it, but I like the new Sublime. Uh, their albums were Ja Won't Pay the Bills, 40 Ounces to Freedom, Robin the Hood, Sublime, and Secondhand Smoke, and notable songs What I Got, Santeria, and Bad Fish. I know there's a Bad Fish Festival every year in Ohio. Um, Sublime's just got it. They had so many hits, and I think they truly deserve to be on this list, even though they're kind of ska. Um, they just deserve to be mentioned on this list. They're, they're just amazing. And so Sublime tie at number seven, and that is with Radiohead, uh, the only English rockers on this list. And it's really crazy to see uh, how the English rockers really took over in the 60s and really a lot in the 70s and started, you know, maybe fizzled out a little bit throughout the decades. Um, really, that West Coast rock uh, took over in the 90s. Uh, Tom York with the lead vocals. I think Radiohead uh, was was very good. I think Radiohead and Sublime, uh, people might kill me for this, but they are kind of similar in sound just a little bit. That's why I had them tied at number seven. Just a little lighter. They're not as grungy and hardcore as uh, Rage Against the Machine. So uh, albums were Pablo, Honey, The Benz, and OK Computer. And notable songs are High and Dry, Karma Police, and Creep. Creep is definitely their best song. If you haven't listened to Radiohead, you gotta listen to Creep. So Radiohead and Sublime tied at number seven. All right, coming in at number six, a lot of people on their lists that I researched have this higher, but I have Alice in Chains at number six. I know they truly embody the 90s. Six is still a great position to be in. Uh, they were also from you guessed it, Seattle, Washington, part of that grunge scene. Lane Stanley with the lead vocals until his death, RIP. Uh, Jerry Contrell uh, had the lead vocals. I think he had some lead vocals, um, but he had the lead guitar in it, and uh, he was just amazing with the guitar. I love Alice in Chains riffs and uh, Jerry Contrell's lead guitar. Uh, their albums were Facelift, Dirt, Jar of Flies, and Alice in Chains, and their songs were Man in the Box, Rooster, and Wood. I love that Rooster music video. It's very good. Uh, you guys got to check it out if you haven't heard Alice in Chains. And uh, they just they just embody the 90s. I think, I think they were very influential and impactful with a lot of high schoolers in the 90s, and uh, I would love to see them live in concert. So Alice in Chains, number six. All right, these top five are some big behemoths. And uh, at number five, I have Blink-182. Uh, some people leave them off the list because they don't consider them rock, but I consider them, you know, a punk rock band, even though they might be pop punk, but whatever. Punk is a subgenre of rock, in my opinion. Uh, they were formed in California, once again, some West Coast style. Uh, Tom DeLonge, Mark Hoppus, Scott Rayner. Uh, Scott Rayner was the original drummer, and then came along Travis Barker. If I made a top 10 list for best drummers, uh, Travis Barker, no doubt, probably be in the top five or three, maybe even number one. I might have to do that list. Let me know if you want me to do a top 10 drummers list. Um, but Matt Skiba is the current lead vocalist of the group. Um, and I saw them live and, and Matt Skiba was a very good lead vocalist. I think he sings the songs very well. Um, but their albums were Cheshire Cat, Dude Ranch, Buddha, and Enema of the State. I think that Enema of the State album, that's really what set them off big. They had some major hits on there. The notable songs, All the Small Things, What's My Age Again, and Adam's Song. Uh, Blink-182 is so special because it hits you right in the heart. Hits you in the heartstrings. Everyone related to it. Everyone could party to it. And uh, everyone could rock out to it. I love Blink-182. I always will. So I had to put them in there. Blink-182 at number five. At number four, I have Pearl Jam. Now, I think Pearl Jam is a very unique band because of the lead vocalist Eddie Vedder. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Uh, very, very good. Very unique sound, I think. They still rocked hard. They were part of that Seattle grunge scene. Their albums were 10 Versus, Vitology, No Code, and Yield, and their notable songs were Even Flow, Alive, and Black. Uh, I think Pearl Jam is another staple of the 90s. They were truly impactful, very popular. People still listen to them to this day. They have great longevity. And uh, a lot of people, when people start playing guitar, 
they learn a lot of Pearl Jam songs. I think I think Pearl Jam has a very big impact on uh, beginner guitarists and just guitarists in general. So I got Pearl Jam at number four. Coming in at number three, this might be my favorite band on the list. I have Green Day. Uh, Green Day's from California, another West Coast. Gotta love it. Uh, Billy Joe Armstrong on the lead vocals. I mean, that that man can just sing. Uh, he kind of sounds like an English rocker at first. Like when I very, very first heard Green Day when I was just a young, young boy, um, I thought they were from England, but they're definitely from California and uh, just very good. Their albums were 1039 Smoothed Out Slappy Hours. I love that album name. Kerplunk Dookie, love that album name. Insomniac and Nimrod and notable songs are Basket Case, Good Riddance, and When I Come Around. So many people cover the songs. So many people, uh, you know, learn the guitars to these songs. I think Good Riddance is just such a timeless song good riddance and even basket case but especially good riddance people play it at graduations people great play it at goodbye parties everyone plays it um and a lot of people cover it so green day is just a staple and even what they did in the 2000s they had just the craziest longevity they're super popular super impactful love green day i love their look all together they have the whole package so green day at number three coming in at number two i have the red hot chili peppers that's right um, I'm not really playing favoritism. I just truly believe they have the best musician skills, best vocals. I mean, they're amazing. They were uh, formed in LA. I mean, just another hub for music. Uh, they had so many band members throughout their career, and I didn't really know that. They had 14 members in the band, and that doesn't even include the touring members. So that just shows you that people wanted to rock with all these guys. People wanted to tour with them. People wanted to play with them. Uh, Anthony Kytus was the lead vocalist throughout. Uh, their albums were Blood Sugar, Sex Magic, One Hot Minute, and California Cation. I love some of these album names. Uh, notable songs were uh, Other Side, California Cation, and Under the Bridge. I know a lot of their songs are, you know, in the rock bands and guitar heroes. Uh, California Cation. Everyone knows Californication. If you don't know Californication, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, they also had some longevity in the 2000s just super popular red hot chili peppers i think makes timeless music people will be listening to them throughout the rest of time and i think that's just what makes them so good and uh they're just great so red hot chili peppers at number two and at number one i have nirvana i know some people think uh, some of their songs were simple in terms of like their musician skills and chords they used, but it doesn't matter. They were so impactful to so many high schoolers, you know, people a little older than me that I talked to, they just have the best memories to Nirvana songs. Um, they're from Aberdeen, Washington, which is two hours from Seattle, so you could basically put them in the Seattle grunge scene. Um, they had also had a decent amount of band members, so you know a lot of people wanted to play with them. Of course, Kurt Cobain as the lead singer, RIP to Kurt Cobain, sucks, why do the good have to go young? Um, but, and after that I know they just couldn't keep going, it was too overwhelming. So, even though they had somewhat of a short career, they had such an impactful career on uh, the youth, and their albums were Nevermind, Incesticide, and In Utero, and notable songs are Come As You Are, Smells Like Teen Spirit, and Heart Shaped Box. I think the legacy that Kurt Cobain left uh, was incredible. People always cover their songs. Um, I think they were just so influential on future rockers, and people have so many memories to Smells Like Teen Spirit, and Come As You Are, and all their songs, and you know, their, their album cover of Nevermind, I mean, with the baby floating in the water is just, it's just legendary. They were just legendary. And I think they rocked out so hard. Uh, you know, they just had an impact on so many people. And even though some people think, you know, the chords they used were simple and whatnot, who cares? They made great music. They made impactful music. And that is truly what being artists are all about. So Nirvana at number one of the 90s. They truly embodied it. So that's my top 10 list of the best rock bands of the 90s. I know it's a bunch of kind of different genres between alternative and grunge and punk and ska and all that, but had to put them under the same umbrella for this specific video. If you want more specific breakdowns of certain genres, let me know in the comments. Let me know uh, whose albums I should rank or whose songs I should rank. I kind of want to start doing that. Maybe top five J. Cole songs of all time 
or the top 10 Beatles songs of all time, or top five Red Hot Chili Peppers songs or albums of all time. Let me know in the comments what countdowns you guys wanna see. And as always, please subscribe to the channel. Please hit a like, it really helps out the channel. We're still growing, so gotta hit some goals along the way. Um, as always, you can listen to my music on all streaming platforms and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EJSpark1. And as always, it's peace, love. I love s'mores. EJ, out.